to all our visitors. It's a lovely song to reflect on and the day of a baptism, or a couple of baptisms. Welcome. We're just going to sing a few songs, or one other song, to prepare our hearts for worship before the service starts.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Good morning and welcome. Welcome one and all. Special warm welcome to those who are visitors among us this morning. Today, we are celebrating the Feast of All Saints. All Saints. The entire church in heaven and on earth. All those who are followers of Jesus. And what a better day to celebrate the sacrament of baptism than today on All Saints. We're going to be incorporating four new Christians into the body of Christ. And that's exciting. I, I just love baptizing people. It's a beautiful day. We have lots of children here today. We've got a special All Saints program for them downstairs in the parish hall. And uh, I just want to say welcome one and all. Let's take a moment to uh, pray together the colic for purity. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all the hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, would the congregation please be seated and the children come and join Deacon Luigi on the parish, on the chancel steps. Children out there, you come join me here. Either way, I'm sitting down here. And I'm going to talk to the children who are in the pews, and I'm going to talk to those who are online joining us, because there are children online joining us. So here we have, we have Mo, and we have Marge, Mo and Marge, right? Now, Mo and Marge are now friends, but they weren't always friends. They weren't always friends. In fact, one day Mo was walking to work. And Mo is a sloth, and sloths do not walk very quickly, right? Do not walk very quickly. So he was in a hurry, in a way a sloth can be in a hurry. But then all of a sudden he notices Marge, and Marge is sitting on a bench, and Marge is crying. And Mo had to make a decision. Do I stop and help Marge, or do I just focus and keep on going? But that meant Mo had to sacrifice some time, and meant that perhaps he was going to be late for work, but nevertheless, he stopped and he helped Marge. He didn't just focus on himself, he focused on Marge. And that was a lesson for Mo, because sometimes Mo didn't want to help people. He liked to help his friends, but he didn't like to help everybody. And especially, he didn't like to help people who hurt him or who he felt wasn't worthy. But he decided to help. And because of that, he gained a new friend. And I think that is our lesson today from Jesus, that blessed are those, and you can fill in the blank, and you're gonna hear that in the gospel today. Let us pray. Dear God, help us. Help us to make others good and help us to be good. By accepting when others make mistakes, help us to apologize and fix our own mistakes. Jesus taught us to ask for forgiveness, to be generous, to be kind, and to love always. We want to be just like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty God, whose people are knit together in one holy church, the mystical body of your Son, grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you sit, please, for the reading of the Scripture? <laughs> reading from the book of Daniel. In the first king, in the first year of the king, Belshar of Babylon. Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw my vision by night, the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea. And four great beasts came up to the sea, different from one another. And this vision is interpreted in Daniel 7, 15 to 18. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled with me and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. He said, as for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth, but the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever, and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reason is from Ephesians. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all this, according to his counsel and will, so that we were the first to set hope, our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with seal of the promised Holy Spirit, this is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God owns his people to the praise of his glory. And Paul's prayer continues. I've heard of your faith in Lord Jesus and your love to all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. That God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So that... With the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all, rule and authority and a power and dominion and above every name that is named not only in this, this age, but also in the age to come. And he put, has put all of these things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of Christ. Let's pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was early in the fall and Derek, whose dad had transferred to Ottawa, had joined our grade three class. Derek's dad was a colonel in the US Marines. He was the American, what they call military attache to the American ambassador. I grew up in Ottawa, by the way. And Derek loved to talk about guns. Imagine, Americans like to talk about guns. Apparently, he would go frequently with his dad to a firing range and shoot off his dad's service pistol. One day, he even brought a copy of Guns and Ammo to school. That's the monthly publication of the National Rifle Association. As you can imagine, this captivated seven-year-old boys. We had guns all right. We had pea guns, we had cap guns, and we had all sorts of adventures, you know, cowboys and Indians, and a game we called war, which was always against the Germans. Sorry, Kim. <laughs> and like World War II, we always won, right? One day at recess, Daris, Derek asked me, Whose side are you on? And I dumbfounded said, what? Whose side am I on? What do you mean? The war said, Derek. Whose side are you on? We aren't at war. 
We won the war. No, no, said Derek. I mean, Vietnam. I replied innocently. I don't know. Eh. Wrong answer. Derek's eyes bulged. His forehead went up. His face turned red. Derek was vexed. And then, without warning, the school bell rang and we were back to class after recess. Later that day, I realized that I had done a good job in making an enemy. How did I know that? Derek began to bully me. The taunting started and continued without ceasing. Every time we were outside, I was harangued with a barrage of criticisms and critiques, observations about my character, my appearance, my sporting ability, my intelligence, and of course, my overall masculinity. People like you, said Derek, are a disgrace to your country and to your family. Stop bothering me, I said. I didn't know what else to say. Stop bothering me, but he wouldn't. And now, folks, this bullying probably looked pretty humorous because I was the tallest kid in my class. Except for, of course, two girls who were taller than me, because that happens in grade three, doesn't it? <laughs> But this, and, and Derek was a pint-sized little shrimp. It looked like one of those little dogs, you know, barking around at a German shepherd. It was, it was funny to watch, apparently, but I didn't know what to do. It really kind of scared me, actually. I didn't know what to do at all. The taunting continued. My patience was wearing thin. Derek started at me at, at recess again. Stop it, I said. He didn't. Stop it, I said. Louder and more emphatically, but he didn't. And Derek seemed to get more and more angry. He started punching the air with his fists in my direction and coming towards me. Hmm. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I'd never been in a fight before in my entire life. While the other boys took judo, I had to take piano lessons. <laughs> I had no idea how to handle myself in a fight. But by this time, I had had enough. So I looked at those fists and I grabbed one of them with my two hands. And I grabbed Derek, and I started spinning him around like a, like a, like a merry-go-round, faster and faster and faster. And he, like a disoriented sailor, tripped over his feet, fell to the ground in a heap, and conked his head. He yelled out, what a holler, and then ran away sobbing into the schoolhouse, into, into the school. Well, the victory was hollow, however, because when I got home, I learned that Derek's mom had phoned my mom. <laughs> and it wasn't a happy scene. Derek's mom had said that I had attacked him for no reason, that I was a bully and I was picking on a newcomer. Well, my dad talked to me later that night. I still remember that. Well, son, he said, Derek not only has a father in the US Marines, he had an uncle in the US Marines who has just been recently killed in Vietnam. Try to cut him some slack, Byron. Try to cut him some slack. I'm sure all of this is a lot for him to deal with. Imagine if we were in Washington and you were going to a school in Washington, you were the only Canadian, you were a stranger, you had no friends, and your favorite uncle had been killed. I had to admit that Dad had a point. 
so I tried to be generous to Derek, but it took a while. Things seemed to simmer down, and the next week, Derek and I were even asked to clean the chalkboards together after school by the teacher. That was probably her intention. And everything seemed to be okay. And after time, we got past that altercation. And whatever it was that had come between us, I can even remember having the guts one day to say to him, I'm sorry about that, Eric. I shouldn't have done that. But I say to you who listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Whoa. Those words are hard to hear, aren't they? This is probably the most radical, on a human level, ridiculous, and yet most important statement Jesus ever made. Why? Because we're living in a time and a place, a society, when living by love your enemies is not the norm. We have no toleration at all for those who support the wrong political views or the wrong moral views. We cannot tolerate people who hold differing values, points of view, or use words or take stands on issues that we might disagree with. They are subhuman. They should be canceled. They are evil. Or at least that's what some people would want us to believe. We're not about doing good to those who hate us. We're not about blessing those who hate us. We're not about blessing those who curse us. That's the last thing we want to do. And yet here it is. In plain English, Jesus is telling us that we've got to change. And if we're followers of Jesus, and that's who I'm talking to this morning, followers of Jesus, frankly, we don't have a choice. We have to love our enemies. Okay, what does that mean? You're probably thinking, well, well, I don't feel love for that. You don't have to. Because love is not an intense form of like. Love in the Bible is not so much a noun as it is a verb. It's not something you seek to find, acquire, or even have an emotive response to. It's what you choose to do. Jesus is talking about the willing of the good of the other. To care, to value, to respect, to treat others as you would do for them what you would want them to do for you. That's love. It's not the warm fuzzies. It's an attitude expressed in action. And Jesus goes on to give three radical illustrations about what he's talking about. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other one also. Turn the other cheek. An action, not a reaction. Designed to calm rather than anger. It's a resolution rather than a retribution. It takes bravery rather than fear. It's surprising. It has the potential to be disarming and it undercuts the building up of hostility. Jesus gives another illustration. Give to everyone who begs from you. Well, I frequently get, folk, I get, folk, I get asked for things like books or tools or money. And I have lots of books and tools and money that have never returned to me. <laughs> and as your pastor, I frequently get approached for grocery gifts or tickets or other such gifts in lieu of cash. And although people frequently say, hey, you know, I'm going to repay, they never do so. But that's okay. We shouldn't get angry about that and say no one is ever going to get any assistance again. The truth is many of these folks are in desperate situations. It is a hard economy to live in right now, even here in Brampton. Should we re re regard these people as our enemies? No. A person in need is a person indeed. And we are to respond in ways we can and not to harden our hearts, but to be generous as God is generous to us, eh? Isn't that the truth? Because here's the secret. God is so much better than just. God is generous. None of us get what we deserve. 
Thanks be to God. <laughs> God is the source of all mercy and love. Now, if you love those who love you, what's, how special is that? Even sinners do that. If you lend from those who you hope to receive, how special is that? Jesus is, in effect, saying, if that's all we're going to do in this world, we're never going to bring change. If all we do is love those who love us, we're going to have zero impact. We have to have the courage to love those who don't love us, bless those who curse us, and respond in different ways to those who are difficult. Love undercuts and reduces escalation, and it may even motivate the other to change their mind and their behavior. Regardless of whatever happens, loving one's enemies is what God wants us to do. And that's what we're required to do. Okay, here's a little example. How does this work on the international stage? Did you know that Canada and Denmark have been at war for 50 years? Okay, it's a little small little thing. Uh, in 1972, Canada and Denmark, of course, Greenland, of course, is part of Denmark. Uh, Greenland and Baffin Island are really close together, and there's a channel of water that goes between Greenland and Baffin Island, Canada and Denmark. And they agreed on, the, on where that border was, but there was a little tiny island, 1.3 kilometers square, tiny, nothing on it, a piece of rock that both countries claimed. And Canada just said, no, that's ours. It says right here in the Hudson Bay Purchase that that's ours. Oh, no, 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 said Denmark. That's ours. It says right here in some other creed from King Carl Gustav the first that that's ours. So, it, you know, the, the Danish army landed on this little island, raised a flag, and left some rather nice Danish schnapps at the foot of the flagpole, right? And then, of course, the Canadian Armed Forces come later that summer, take down the Danish flag, raise the Canadian flag, enjoy the Danish schnapps, and leave Canadian whiskey. And this went on for about 50 years. Now, it actually heated up in 1982, and they started patrolling naval ships around the island. Right? So, so it was kind of heated up, but thankfully, the two foreign ministers of both countries were in New York at the time. And what did they do? They went and had a drink together. And they worked it out. OK. Finally, uh, finally, uh, of course, we know this past year, Russia invaded the Ukraine. And the silly little conflict between Canada and Denmark became an international embarrassment. It was no longer silly, it was embarrassing. Both Canada and Denmark were allies. They were both members of NATO. And it was time for us to show that we were mature adults and that we could work this out. So finally, in June, they decided to divide the island. There's a little ring of fish, fissure, a crack that goes through the island. That's the border. Complicated, eh? Love your enemies. Now, if there are any Danish people in here, you're not our enemies. But you get the point. These things can be worked out. OK, how about individually? Perhaps you've heard of Daryl Davis. Davies. I want to tell you about Daryl Davies. What a hero. Daryl is a well-known jazz musician who's also famous for befriending dozens of members of the Ku Klux Klan. And through these friendships with Daryl, several members of the Ku Klux Klan have left the KKK. Oh, by the way, Daryl is black. And when he was 10 years old, he was marching in a Boy Scout parade, carrying the American flag. And they got to a certain uh, block where people were throwing stuff at him. And as he's marching along, I think, to, boy, that's strange. These people want to have an issue with the Boy Scouts. And, and Daryl went home, and his mother explained to him that these people were throwing things at him because they were prejudiced against him because of the color of his skin. Daryl was dumbfounded because, you see, he had grown up elsewhere. His dad was a diplomat. 
He was actually, even though he's an American citizen, he was new in the country. This was a new experience for him. He wanted to ask those white folks who were throwing things at him, why do you hate me when you know nothing about me? He was able to ask that question a little later to the, uh, the what's it called, the imperial wizard of the Ku Klux Klan, that's the, like the archbishop or whatever, the, you know, the president, whatever, they, the, 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 the top ranking KKK member. He set up a meeting, they sat down over coffee in conversation, they had a couple of co coffees in conversations. And a funny thing happened, the two became friends. And this led to other conversations with other members of the Ku Klux Klan. And over time, develop, Daryl developed dozens of these friendships, which resulted in these Klan members living, leaving the Ku Klux Klan. What a, what a powerful gift, right? Challenging these assumptions with truth and love, and these people repented. In 2017, there was a rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, where the leader of the Confederate White Knights, Richard Preston, got all wound up and shot off his, his personal firearm into the crowd of protesters. Daryl offered to put up Richard's bail, later met with him, and took him to the American Museum of African history in Washington, D.C. And the two became friends. When Richard got married, he asked Daryl if he would walk his bride down the aisle. What a radical different way of defeating your enemies. What a radical different way of causing change. It's shocking. It's radical. It's so contrary to how we would normally react, loving our enemies, but friends, it's the way of Jesus. And it's the way we are called to live. Let's pray. God of all holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example in truth and love with boldness and joy. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Invite the uh, congregation to be seated and the parents, sponsors, and families to remain standing. Very good. Uh, individually, I'll ask the parents and sponsors to present their candidates for holy baptism. The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. question I ask of all of the families, parents, and sponsors that are gathered here today. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is nurtured in the faith and life of the Christian community? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? Do you promise to obey him as your Lord? And this question I ask to everyone gathered here together today, family, friends, visitors, members of Christ Church Brampton, will you, who witness these vows, do all in your power to support these children in their life in Christ? We will. Well then, let's stand and pray for them. Let us now pray for Zyra, Zyra, Zyraya, sorry, Isla, Jax, and Aaliyah, who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. To God the Father, who first loved us and made us His own image. To God the Son who loved us, who showed us the way on the earth. And to God, the Holy Spirit, who spreads the love of God abroad in our hearts, we raise our prayers this morning. Deliver Zariah, Isla, Jax, and Aaliyah, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, bring Zariah, Isla, Jax, and Aaliyah to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, for this assembly gathered to celebrate the Eucharist in the communion with the church in heaven and throughout the world that nourished by the word of truth and the bread of life, we may bear witness in our generation to the timeless gospel of Christ. Lord, for those who have departed this life in faith and in the fear of God, whisper their name or say aloud that they may join before the throne and the Lamb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of the church, hear our prayers and make us one in the heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Grant, O Lord, 
that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son Jesus Christ received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are here cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? believe in God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin? Repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation and respect, sustain, and renew the life of the earth? Be seated. Okay, Zach. 
Jax, sir. Hop up there. All right. Name this young man. Jax McKay Taylor. Jax McKay Taylor, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jax McKay Taylor, I sign you with the sign of the cross and mark you as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon Jax your the forgiveness of sin and have raised him to a new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and a discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. This child. Aaliyah Gracie Ray Reaper. Aaliyah, all right. Aaliyah Gracie Ray. I baptize you in the name of the Father, <laughs> and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The water's a little cold. <laughs> Poor Gracie. Okay. Gracie. I sign you with the sign of the cross and mark you as Christ's own forever. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you bestowed upon Gracie Ray, your servant, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised her to a new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Good. Okay. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to a new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and a discerning heart, the spirit to love and to know you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Very good. Congratulations. There you go. Thank you, Mommy. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you've bestowed upon this, your, your precious daughter, the forgiveness of sin, and have raised her to a new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. to light. Thank you, Spencer. Receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Receive the light of Christ to show that you have passed from darkness to light. <coughs> Let us pray. Let your light so shine before others that they, they may, may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Baptized, we receive, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified, <coughs> proclaim his resurrection, and share us. The peace of the Lord always be with you. <clears throat> Show a sign of peace to one another. And you may want to just stand. It's easier to do when you're standing. Bless you. Thank you. Okay. Good job. That was fun. That's what we
Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for tr the triumph of Christ in the lives of all your saints. Receive all we offer you this day and help us like them to run our course with faith that we may come to your eternal kingdom. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise, who in the multitude of your saints have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we, rejoicing in that fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation. In calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to sing.
Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Uh, the chalice is available for those who wish to receive it. Please do not intinct, but receive it directly. Uh, some of our people receive communion in one kind only, and that's okay. Uh, if that's your custom, that's okay too, but both are offered. If you'd like to receive a blessing only, please come up and X your arms before your chest like that. This says to me that you'd like to receive communion. This says to me, you'd like to receive a blessing. I don't know what this means. So, so uh, help me out, okay? Very good. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks God.
Let us pray. Lord of hosts, we praise your glory reflected in all your saints. May we who share at this table be filled with the joy of your eternal kingdom, where Jesus is Lord, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God whose power working in us could do infinitely more than we can ask for imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be upon you and those you love and serve, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Just by way of announcements, briefly, please take your announcement sheet home with you. Those who are joining us on, the, on YouTube, please click on over to our main parish website for happenings at Christchurch Brampton. Uh, Tuesday, on November the 1st, we will gather advisory board of Christchurch Brampton. Uh, please, please remember, uh, that meeting's coming up. Oh, we're gonna, please sit down, yeah. <laughs> We've got a couple of people to pray for, and uh, a couple of things to uh, remind people of. This coming Sunday, uh, the second of, no or rather the sixth of November, we're going to be having a special remembering service at four o'clock in the afternoon uh, to uh, to acknowledge those who have who have died during COVID. Some. Some, uh, some people perhaps maybe didn't, didn't have a large funeral and they'd like to have an opportunity to come and to acknowledge that, that grief and that loss. Uh, we're going to be doing that this Sunday at 4 p.m. A remembering service. Now in your leaflet there is uh, a little card here. You may want to fill that out and give it to us. Uh, uh, someone, someone special and dear to you that you'd like us to remember in our prayers. Also, um, one of our number, Abushek, this is your last Sunday with us. God bless you. Uh, Abushek is, well, he's been promoted to, to Connecticut. Oh my goodness, your corporate headquarters in Connecticut. Abushek, we really enjoy getting to know you as a member of our congregation. We just want to ask God's blessing of upon you and may God bless you in your your new home may God raise up for you all sorts of good things for you so let's pray for Abishai Heavenly Father we thank you for your servant Abishai and we ask O Lord that you would go before him raise up for him good friends uh, grant him uh, a safe safe lodging uh, and, uh, and a good home and Lord we ask that you would raise up for him a good Christian home a good uh, church there in Connecticut. Bless your servant as you call him forth in his life in you. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to just say a word of thanks for all those who have, uh, well, all those who have offered themselves for service this year in leadership here at Christ Church Brampton. So I hope you don't mind if I call your names up. Maybe you could stand. Um, our Rector's Warden this year is Shamila DeRoche. Thank you, Shamila. Our People's Warden, Sarah Lagola. I remember giving you communion. There you are, <laughs> Sarah. Awesome. Our Deputy Rector's Warden, our reader this morning, Sean Joseph. Way to go. And our Deputy People's Warden, the fellow who's helping you with the hand sanitizer, Chris Bird. Chris Bird. Our lay representatives to Synod, Samir Tikram. He's in the choir. There he is. There's Samir. Uh, Barb Wesley, I think Barb had to work today. They have a restaurant, but uh, she's very active in our congregation. And Sinead, she came. There we go. Our other lay rep to Synod. And of course, if any of them can't go to Synod, Lisa Lipson is our alternate. And uh, I, I think Lisa is downstairs helping with the children. Shiny Wilson is our member at large. Hey, Shiny. Anasse Samuel, I, I believe she's down helping with the kids as well. Thank you to our treasurer, Kathy Newbert, and our engagement reviewer, Peter Volks, and of course, our ever faithful envelope secretary. Carolyn, where are you? Yay, Carolyn. She's somewhere. Oh, she left. That's okay, thank you, Carolyn. Okay, so let's, uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are in leadership here at Christ Church Brampton. Thank you for all the names that I have mentioned, and for those who are ministry team leads. Lord, we thank you for our deacon, Luigi. We thank you for uh, all those who read and serve, visit, uphold, and do things in the background. We thank you for our altar guild, our music ministries, those who volunteer with our children and youth ministries. And Lord, I ask your special blessing to be upon them, uphold them, and keep them 
in their work this year in you. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Very good. I believe that's everything. Next week, this, this feels like pre-COVID, doesn't it, this morning? I got another pre-COVID surprise for you. Weekly coffee hour is resuming next week. Wow. Thank you, Charlene Bickerstaff, and the many people who have volunteered for that ministry. I can't wait. Uh, now, kids, if there are any kids here, I don't know, there's a, there's a children's program downstairs, and there's some chocolate. So don't go away without your chocolate. Okay? Well, let's stand and praise God together. We have too many children to bring up from the gym. So parents, go down and get your children after, this, uh, after the service. Hey, thanks be to God for another blessing. My siblings in Christ, our Eucharist has ended, but our service now begins. Go forth and be the voice, the hands and the feet of Christ to each other in the whole world. Thanks be to God.